what? Oh. Today I want to talk a bit about motivation or more exactly what to do when you're feeling unmotivated. And here I'm not talking about the case where you feel unmotivated about everything in your life and you feel like you're in a rut. That's a discussion for another video. But what I do want to talk about today is that very specific situation and I know that you guys know about this where you know that you need to get something done but you just can't get yourself to do it. You just feel so unmotivated. You'd rather do anything else than starting to write that resume or applying for grad school or making an appointment to go to the dentist. Just like everyone else, my motivation fluctuates at times. And I think that this is the case for everyone. Even the most famous and most successful people will experience times where they don't feel as motivated. And this is completely normal. And despite having a bit more motivation on some days and a bit less on others all in all i still managed to get most of the things that i want to do done and today i want to share with you five concrete and practical things that i apply when i feel less motivated that help me to still get that thing done and what i'm about to share with you is not theory but actual steps that i now regularly apply whenever i feel a bit unmotivated but i know that i have to get a certain thing done anyway by the way in case you're new to this channel welcome to my channel multiple careers i make videos about career change, multiple careers, and I want to help you to shape the kind of career that you want and that you feel is right for your life. Nowadays, more and more people are having multiple careers, and what this means is that you are either pursuing multiple careers at the same time or that you have several careers at different stages in your life. If you're curious to know more about this, then you might want to check out my other video, which I link up here. I'm going to try to keep it short because I have a feeling that you guys prefer content that is more concise and short, but let me know in the comments what you think about that. Number one is to make intentional decisions and choices. I think that the number one reason why we feel not motivated to do something is that we feel like we do not have a choice. Most people prefer to have a certain level of autonomy and what this means is that most people prefer to have a choice as to when they do something and how they want to go about it. So let's say that you have to write your resume to apply for a new job and you really don't feel like it. But if you take a step back, actually there are so many ways that you can break down the process and there are so many choices that you have within getting that resume done. Let's say that you will need around four hours to write your resume. There are many ways that you can get this done. You can, for example, choose to break this down into four sessions which last one hour each and do it on a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Another way would be to decide to do everything in in one session for four hours, let's say on a Saturday. In the end, you still need to get your resume done, but no one says that you have to get it done right now. I mean, it's a different case if it involves a task that you have to deliver for someone else, because then most likely there is a certain deadline that is already set. But even in those cases, I would argue that you do have some room to make decisions as to how and when exactly you want to complete the task. By making your decisions more intentional, which includes deciding when exactly you want to work on something and how you want to go about about the process, that will give you a feeling of autonomy. That will give you a sense that you do have a choice about what you want to do or not do in life. And the more specific you are about it, the more motivated you are likely to be because then you are going to see that task as something that is very personal, something that you actively chose to do and for which you have your own way to go about. So instead of saying, I have to get my resume done by today and I really don't feel like it, try this. I am going to write my resume in three sessions, which last one and a half hours each day for the next three days. And I'm going to do this at my kitchen table with a cup of coffee right after lunch. Number two is to limit the time and scope. Oftentimes we feel unmotivated because we don't have a clear idea about how long and how much effort it is going to take us. And in that sense, a task can seem really scary because it looks as something that could have the potential to be never ending. When I was updating my resume and LinkedIn the other day, I knew that it was important to set myself a time limit and also a limit on the scope. And this was something that really got me motivated because I knew this task wasn't something that could go on forever and ever and have no end in sight. And the next important thing that I needed to do is to limit the scope. So when I updated my resume, I decided that all I wanted to do is to update my recent experience of the last one to two years. And because the content of my resume started to grow, I set myself a goal to shorten and simplify the bullet points for each experience so that everything could fit neatly on two letter-sized pages. By limiting the time and the scope, everything became really 
clear in my mind so I had this very clear picture of what I wanted to achieve and that way it didn't seem as frightening to start anymore. I got motivated really quickly and started working on it as per plan because I knew that okay today I only need to work on this resume for one hour and these are the things that I'm going to do and not more. Okay in some cases in many cases I ended up doing more but this is kind of a bonus. The point is that I knew clearly what the time limit and the scope was so it made the whole task seem less intimidating. Number three is negotiate with yourself. This might sound a bit strange to you but bear with me this is a concept that was was very enlightening to me. This is something that Jordan Peterson talks about very frequently, that we need to negotiate with ourselves instead of tyrannizing ourselves. You can ask yourself, okay, well, I've got these responsibilities. I have to schedule the damn things in. What's the right ratio of responsibility to reward? And you can ask yourself that just like you'd negotiate with someone who is working for you. It's like, okay, you got to work tomorrow. Okay, so I want you to work tomorrow. And you might say, okay, well, what are you going to do for me? that makes it likely that I'll work for you. Well, you could ask yourself that, you know. So maybe you do an hour of, of responsibility and then you play a video game for 15 minutes. I don't know, whatever turns your crank, man. But, you know, you have to negotiate with yourself and not tyrannize yourself. And what this means is that we cannot constantly force ourselves to do certain things. If we wanted someone else to do something for us, we wouldn't command and demand all the time, right? We would try to discuss and negotiate with them and try to see what works for the other person. And we should treat ourselves the same way. There are things that we have have to do but we as human beings also have needs so what we need to try to do is find a balance between those shoulds wants and needs so how would I apply this in the earlier case of writing a resume instead of telling yourself you're lazy you're always procrastinating you never get things done and you have to write that resume right now or else instead of doing that and being harsh toward yourself try to ask yourself what would you need in order to make the process of writing your resume acceptable? For example, would you perhaps need to take a quick 10 minutes walk outside first? Or do you need to watch three YouTube videos first before you get started? Or how about we work on that resume for half an hour and then get ourselves a coffee and then continue for another half an hour? And because everyone is different, there will be a different solution to each case. And this doesn't mean that you have to cave into all of your wants. But what you need to do is try to negotiate between what you need and what you feel that you have to do. If you're not used to this yet, in the beginning, it might take some practice, but after a while, if you apply this regularly, it will come very easy to you. For example, I need to pay the bills, but I don't feel like it. So negotiate with yourself. How about let's put on some nice jazz music and then let's limit our time working on the bills for half an hour only today. And when we're finished with that, how about a five minute nap or just five minutes of doing anything that you want? By the way, in case you like this video so far, you might want to give it a thumbs up. And also, if you don't want to miss out on my future videos, then you might want to consider to hit the subscribe button and also the little alarm bell so that YouTube will notify you of my future videos. Number four is to introduce some novelty. Fun is a really important factor when it comes to motivation. And if we look at all our goals and tasks and habits building, oftentimes we forget about the fun. But if we have to do something anyway, we might as well try to have some fun while doing it. And this could be something as easy as taking your work to a new cafe that you haven't visited before. Sometimes this could also mean something as simple as buying a new set of notebooks or some colored pens, if you will. I know it sounds a bit silly, but I'm certain that you know about the concept that when a few friends get together, a couple of beers always make things merrier. And I'm not telling you to get a six pack now, although if you're working from home, there's nothing that really speaks against it. But what I mean is that you have to try to get some fun into the process. There's another really interesting concept that is related to this that is called the grand gesture. This term was coined by Carl Newport in his book, Deep Work. And the concept is simple. By leveraging a radical change to your environment, coupled perhaps with a significant investment of effort or money, all dedicated towards supporting a deep work task or a task, you increase the perceived importance of this task. This boost in importance reduces your mind's instinct to procrastinate and delivers an injection of motivation and energy. If you're curious to know more about this, then you might want to check out my other video, which I'll link up here on the grand gesture. Number five is imagining your future self. And yes, I'm talking about visualization here. I just want to be grown up. And she woke up. 17 years later. 
but this is not a long term or meditational thing and it's not just some inspirational crap either it's something that actually works one of the reasons why you might feel unmotivated to start something is because you focus on the first steps of the process if you're about to pay your bills for example and let's say you haven't done it in a long time the first thing that you might think about is about the big stack of unopened bills and you might even not know for sure where all the bills are in case they are scattered all around your house and then you start thinking about the process where you need to open up each envelope and look at what's inside and it feels very tedious and boring of course that's something that you have to do eventually but in order to get yourself motivated try to think about how you think that you will feel once you finish the whole thing when i was about to update my resume but i didn't feel like it i started thinking about how i would feel once i completed that task and i saw the future version of myself typing in an updated title of my updated resume clicking save as and then converting it into PDF and then putting it on a folder or on my desktop somewhere where I can find it and imagining that made me feel happy and relaxed and that was a state that I wanted to get to as soon as possible and now you might ask aren't these just short-term solutions and yeah you're totally right these are mostly short-term solutions if you want to have lasting long-term motivation then you have to look elsewhere you will really need to work on a system of goals habits and routines but in the short term, you still need a solution, right? While you're working on your long-term strategy, you still need to solve what is right in front of you. And with some practice, if you repeat these five things on a regular basis, this process in itself can become a habit. And this is what it could look like. You encounter tasks that you feel you need to do, and you don't feel like it, you feel unmotivated. But then you realize this thing has to be done eventually anyway. And then you start applying the five things which I just mentioned, which are making intentional choices and decisions, limiting the time and the scope, negotiating with yourself to find a solution that actually works for you, introducing some novelty to make it fun, and finally imagining your future self, how you think that you feel afterwards. And if you do this frequently enough, if you do this every time you encounter a task that you feel unmotivated to do, after a while this will come very easy to you on another note it's actually a good thing that we don't feel motivated about everything because all that motivation is is a need or a drive that compels us to do something and take action for example i frequently feel motivated to go to mcdonald's and get myself some chicken mcnuggets especially when my meal planning that day didn't go as planned and almost always i feel motivated to drop by into a sale at zara or at the mall and from here we can see that motivation is not something that is always beneficial to us. Having motivation to do something doesn't necessarily mean that the goal is something that will benefit us. So I would say in the long term, motivation is not something that you should rely on. That would be a bad plan. But in the short term, yes, by all means, use those motivational fixes that work for you, that help you to get the thing that you need to do done. So what did you think about this video, guys? Do you have other motivational tips and hacks that work for you that are not just theory, but that have actually helped you in your own life to get ahead? If there are any, I would be really curious to hear about them and please share them in the comments below. If you have plans on changing your career or you want to get ahead in your career, you might also want to check out my other videos. As always, I thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you again soon.